time. Macy, how are you doing? I'm good. Well, Thanks good, for having me. Good evening. Welcome to the Youth Specialties family and, of course, your former home church here, First Baptist Church of Lithia Springs as well. And we thank Pastor Kevin for allowing us to actually be here tonight. Well, hey, the movie's just gotten started, and I have a couple things I want to read to you that we just got just right off, off the press here. Number one independent film in the country this last week. How does that feel? Uh, it feels kind of crazy, honestly. Okay, well, let's make it crazier. It's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me read some of these some quotes here to you. Here we go. Hey, as a portrait of someone grappling with life and feeling off loneliness, even thoughts of suicide, I'm not ashamed, is more than expected. Forbes magazine says this. It's compassion. As a talented actress, that's you, by the way, at, at its center, I mean, based on a teenager's actual journal, captures youthful dialogue better than many. From Forbes magazine. That's pretty cool, by the way. So once again, how's all this feel? It's really incredible. You know, our prayer when we started making I'm Not Ashamed um, was, or when we started filming actually, was we, we knew the impact that this story had on us. And we knew the, really the power of the story. Um, and honestly, all of us felt God's hand just covering this story the whole entire time we were filming. Um, Post-production, everything, his hand never left it. And um, everyone that was on set, you know, not everyone was a believer. And um, but no matter who was on the set, though, everyone walked away so impacted and really changed. No one wow. really walked away the same from it. And so we knew if, if that affected us that way, we were kind of just like anticipating and, and expecting uh, the impact it was going to make on people. But since it's come out, the stories that have come from mm. people seeing it after they go to the theater... I mean, countless stories keep flooding in of um, teenagers that honestly were contemplating suicide. And like you were saying, and um, this changes everything for them. Wow. Um, hundred, the first night they showed it in Nashville, the premiere um, of the film on a Wednesday night, 100 people gave their heart to Jesus that That's night. Awesome. Wow. Uh, so, and that was just the beginning, and they keep coming in. So uh, it's incredible, honestly. I got to tell you, when I heard it was coming out, I immediately thought, okay, this was 17 years ago. Like, how do you make something that was 17 years ago, man, come alive and just be as fresh as, it's, as, it, as it was 17 years ago? Yeah. You know, it's amazing, too, that a story hasn't been told yet about her life. Yeah. Um, but really, her mom, Beth, had been protecting the story um, for hmm. the past 17 years. There's been a lot of producers that have wanted to take the film. There's been a lot of uh, directors that have, you know, wanted to get their hands on this story. Um, just because it has to do with Columbine and people know Rachel from Rachel's Challenge. Yeah. And, um, but really, she'd been protecting it uh, for this long. And then the past e few years, she really just felt like the right producers came along. And she mm -hmm. felt like it was time and it was God's timing. Um, and, and two, I don't know, when God works in someone's life, I don't think that ever gets old. And so, wow. you yeah. know, and so, I mean, even things that we hear in the Bible, I mean, that speaks to us today. I mean, that's now, different. Yeah. So, you know, it's in the Word of God. But the work that he was doing through Rachel and the way that he moved through Rachel and the impact that she had, mm -hmm. I don't, it was one girl and she was 17 years old and she was a high schooler and she was wow. real and she, she wasn't, she wasn't perfect. And so I think that speaks to us today of, you know, you don't have to be perfect for God to use you. Mm -hmm. Um, but he uses a surrendered heart and, um, a heart that, you know, chases after him. And that's what Rachel had. Now you were only four when this happened. Sorry to tell your age tonight to everybody, but you were only four. How did you prepare for this? Um, honestly, when I got the audition, or when I actually, not when I got the audition, but when, when I get, knew I booked the part, I had auditioned for it for about a year. It wow. was a long process. Um, they were scouting the nation and just really trying to figure out who they wanted to play the part. Yeah. So I was, honestly, when I got the part, I was really intimidated <laughs> um, because, I don't know, I feel like I was way and over my head and but I also learned when God calls you to do something it's never anything that you you know if it's going to be used in a mighty way it's not something that you can do right it's not something that you can you know through your own strength or your own abilities um so I really had to depend on him every single day now most students don't like to wait most adults don't either so waiting for a full year like how did you learn patience and trust that the whole entire process from auditioning until actually being told, hey, you got it. And then I'm sure filming took another feeling of the period of time too. So like, how'd you learn patience through that? 
honestly, it was hard. It wasn't anything that was easier that I sailed through, you know, <laughs> um, perfectly at all. Um, but I needed that year so bad. And that's really, I felt like that year the Lord prepared me f- to do the part more than anything. Hmm. Um, he taught me, I don't know, just what full, fully surrender of, it, 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 even when I got the audition, the first time I got the audition, um, I don't know, I had a gut feeling that I knew I was going to do the role. Wow. Um, and, and I remember telling my mom that, not even knowing why, except for it being from the Lord. And then hmm. when a year, you know, again, when the Lord causes you to do something, a lot of times he doesn't give it to you. Yeah, you're like si- you're sent through yeah. a huge process. <laughs> and so through that process, I don't know, the Lord was just really preparing me and showing me what surrender looks like, what trust looks like. And um, he also taught me what it looks like for him to fight for you. Because uh, really, there's no reason I should have gotten this part. <laughs> um, wow. I'm an actress, and I've I've trained really hard. And you know, that year I did train really hard, and I've I've done a lot of things. But I mean, I live in Atlanta, Georgia. They were scouting LA, and really the odds were just against me. And they had actually wow. even given the part to someone else at one time. So I don't know. I remember the Lord speaking to me one time uh, in my quiet time, and He just said that He would fight for me. And mm. a couple of weeks, I got a call that that they'd felt like the Lord said it was me. Wow. So, now, why did yeah. you feel like you were not right for the part? I got to ask that question. Well, I don't know. I mean, there's so many ways I could relate to Rachel, and I, I think just feeling intimidated by the role. I mean, mm. I knew how powerful the story was, and I knew that they were looking for, you know, quote, unquote, the perfect person. And I don't know, when you get a role that you know it's going to make such a big impact and people are expecting it to be so great, Yeah. You, I don't know, I just felt in over my head. and. I think anybody would probably yeah, feel like that. I definitely would. I mean, especially following someone like her, basically. And then, not to mention, you were also on the set daily with her mom, Beth. Yeah. Um, what was that like? Oh, um, before I even went to film in Nashville, Beth called me. Hmm. And she just told me how proud she was of me. And we hadn't even met yet. Wow. But she said she felt confident that I was supposed to do it. And that God had called me to do it. Um, she knew it, and that was so special. And then when we were on set, she even made a comment that she felt like Rachel was kind of back, um, wow. just being around me. And that was just, I don't know, it's crazy. Yeah. So we have a really special relationship, and anytime we get to be around each other, it's so sweet. Um, now, Rachel had a, had a great journal. That's how we got the movie. Did you get a chance to look at any of that at all or read through any of that? Yeah, she left eight journals, actually. Wow. Um, she journaled a lot, and most of it was to the Lord. Hmm. Um, actually, the majority of, majority of it was kind of like a prayer journal. And um, I got to dig through those every single night after set, or I had, I had access to them while I was on set. Like, any time I needed them, wow. I had them. Was there any part in those eight? I didn't know that there were eight of them. Mm-hmm. Were there any part in those eight that you would say, man, this one stands out that you can still remember? Yeah. Oh, man. There were so many times throughout the journals that really Rachel kind of knew she was going to die. Wow. And it was almost a prophetic thing, really. Um, but And I feel like God was revealing things to her, and she really didn't know what or why, but she wrote it down. Mm. And, you know, we're thankful she did write it down. Um, but if it, when you read them, it just looks like God was preparing her and preparing her heart and kind of just letting her know, like, something big was going to happen. And she writes that she, um, a year to the date before she died, she wrote that she knew it was going to be her last year. And she said that wow. she wrote to God that she had gotten all she can from here. And on the day she died, she was drawing a picture, and she drew a pair of eyes, and 13 tears were falling from the pair of eyes. And the, eye, wow. the, the teardrops turned into blood drops, and they fell onto a rose. And uh, 13 people died the day she was drawing it. Wow. And so just so many things like that. She just, I feel like God was just revealing to her. And she wrote was, it down. Yeah, it was her last year. Um, now, she was one of the first of, of the 13. Um, and when I saw that part of, of the movie, of the clip, I thought, wow, I didn't, I didn't realize that she was one of the first until preparing for our time tonight. And I, what did that say to you? You know, you're thinking about, man, out of the 13 people, you know, two of you count the, the two boys, that she was one of the first. So what did that say to you throughout all that, and how did that speak to you? Well, um, you know, I, I've never thought about it that way, but 
I, I don't know. She the, the killers made a list, and Rachel was the first person on that list. And the other people on the list actually didn't end up dying that day. So Rachel was the only person on the list that they had made that actually died. Wow. Uh, so I don't know. I she you know she, when she died she was sitting outside and she was talking to her friend and the guy she was sitting with didn't actually die hmm. um this is how we know that yeah, you story. know what was spoken between the shooters and the rate and rachel uh so he's still alive today and um yeah he's the reason we know what was said and i believe his his name is richard uh, uh Casteldo from the yeah. do you get a chance to speak to him or any of her friends at all no i haven't spoken to him but um, the guy that plays Nathan yeah. um, in the movie, I don't know if you've seen the movie, um, but her best friend, uh, he's a street kid, and Rachel befriends him. You know, he's a homeless yeah. guy, and his name's Nathan in the movie, but in real life, his name is Mark, and uh, he's still alive today, and he came to the premiere. Wow. And, <laughs> oh, my goodness, it was so crazy seeing him. That and to be, yeah. when he saw the movie, he saw it a few, uh, a little bit before the premiere, but he said he felt like he was watching a memory rather than mm. watching a movie. And oh. I don't know. that You know, we tried to be as accurate as possible, but those little details even that we didn't even know happened, you know, I think God was just working through the director and working through me mm. and working through every produ- I mean, everyone on set of just doing things we didn't even know were really happening yeah. or really happened, but they did. <laughs> you know, it's, it's interesting because she's first on their list because of her, of her, you know, love for God um, and for the cause of Christ. What would you tell today's student who's going to, you know, school every day, um, and it's a tough environment, like how would you tell students today to, even in tough environments like our middle schools and high schools, to keep the faith? Like what, what words of encouragement would you give to them? I would say, I mean, no matter who we are, we're all going to, life's going to be hard. And, you know, we're all going to die one day, and whether it's earlier or later. And so, you know, with the, dying is inevitable. And I don't know, but, but the one thing we have is hope, hmm. and that's Jesus. And that makes all the difference of we don't have anything to fear because of that. And I think, you know, Rachel's last moment, she was able to say, you know, I believe in God, with wow. a gun pointed up to her head because she knew the hope that no one could take away from her. And... Um, and even in those moments, I, I believe she experienced the love of God like never before, too. And I would just say, you, you know, Jesus in Rachel's life, you know, proved to be the only thing that satisfied her soul. Mm. And, you know, she tried everything else. She wasn't, she wasn't perfect in the fact that she never tried things of the world. Like, she, she really did. She tried it all. Wow. But it, it left her empty. And it left mm. her, um, it didn't satisfy her like, he, you know, like Jesus did. And so it's worth it. I would say it's, 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 you know, to intimately know him and, and to follow him, he satisfies, he satisfies you. Now, once again, you're playing someone's life, Rachel's life. How did this movie and how did her playing her, you know, how did that change you as a person? There's honestly in so many ways, but one thing that still sticks with me, um, one of the, the many things that really sticks with me today is, you know, even when Rachel was a little girl, she knew she was going to make an impact on the world. Mm. And even in the movie, you'll see this, and this happened in real life, but she drew her hand on the back of a dresser, and in it she wrote, these hands belong to Rachel Joy Scott, and they'll someday touch millions of people's hearts. And she wow. wrote that as a little girl. Wow. Um, but, you know, she had no idea knowing that through her death, millions of people would hear about the impact she made, or that's how she would make her impact. But... When she was alive, she was just faithful, honestly. Yeah. Like, she was faithful where God put her. And, yeah, she struggled, and she wasn't perfect, and life was hard. But she really was faithful to, to be the hands and feet of Jesus to people right where God put her. You know, she didn't yeah. wait for an influence or a big group of people or a platform to make a difference. Yeah. Uh, she just reached out where she was. Now, you grew up here in the Atlanta area. I call it. God's country. Um, and so what was that like? You know, and you were a pastor's kid, and we talked about this too. And so what was it like growing up in a, in a pastor's home? 
It was great, honestly. Really? Okay, you're it one of the few. No, I'm joking. Yeah, well, <laughs> I get that question all the time of like, oh, you're that pastor's kid. Yeah, you're kid. that person, yeah. Or, you know, like, that must be terrible. But my, I don't know, my parents did such a good job of, hmm. I don't know, I never felt like I was a pastor's kid. They were just like, if you love Jesus, this is how you live, you know? Yeah. And so there was never, I never felt that pressure, honestly. But um, I don't know, it was so fun, like, Every Friday night was family night, and, like, we would do all, we'd go outside and play hide-and-go-seek, and, you know, like, everybody, my dad, my mom, and um, movie nights. Like, I don't know. We were a really close family, and we still are. Wow. And I don't know. They really just taught us what it looked like to follow Jesus, and they were I don't know. It was it was amazing, honestly. Now I won't tell your age, obviously, but you're in your early twenties. Um, what is this like? I mean, it's number one, of course, independent films. I mean, it's done very, very well to be out in only 505 theaters. That's that's pretty impressive. Um, how how are you handling the pressure of doing lots of these? Um, hopefully, this is probably your best one, obviously. Um, but how are you handling all that? Um, it's. You know, you kind of just realize, you know, this, what we're doing, it's it's for a short amount of time. You know, it's hmm. we're promoting right now because the movie will be in theaters for however long. And so, I don't know. I think we all just want to give it all that we have. And we know yeah. the importance of the story. And hearing the stories that people are telling us after they go see the movie, it's so worth it to give everything we have. I mean, lives are being changed. Yeah. And so... Anything and everything I can do to, to help with that, I want to. Now, what would you say to youth pastors and pastors, too, who have students who, who are just like you, who feel like, man, God's calling them to act? What piece of information advice would you give to them? That's a good question. Um, I would say, I, I don't know. It's a lot of times it's just, like, you're never just going to get there. You're not just going to wake up and an opportunity is at your door. It's a lot of little steps. And um, first of all, you, you know, your relationship with God is the most important mm -hmm. thing, and that will determine um, everything about you, you know, yeah. like what your pursuits are and where your heart is. But also, you know, I feel like God's gifted us all in really unique and different ways. And um, if he's given you a passion and a love to act, I really think that's from him. Yeah. And if you're, you know, if you have a talent for it, then, um, I would just say surrender it to him and and tell him your desires with it. And really, I mean, he he'll 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 always be your promoter. Yeah. You'll never be the one that puts yourself places. You know, I it do, never yeah. works like that. So I don't know. I would just say surrender it to him and just keep going. Wow. Now speaking of promote, you've been all over everywhere. Uh, how long did it take to make this movie? I, mean, uh, I think six to seven weeks, and we worked every day, um, got one day off, and it was like 12 to 16 hour days, so it was a lot. Okay, I'm working eight for certain people, I won't say who can be tough, so how, how do you do 16? I mean, that's tough. Okay, well, honestly, I realized how much I loved it when I was working 16 hours, and was that was like fueling me, wow. so I realized that, oh, like I actually love this. And so, and honestly, when you're in the business, you learn really fast if you love or hate it. Because okay. um, if you don't love it, you will hate. The 16-hour days. Hate yeah. 12 to 16 hours. You will hate everything about it. So if you love it, it'll fuel you, actually. How many times have you seen the movie? And does it ever get old seeing it over <laughs> and over and over again? Um, I've seen it oh, maybe 15 times, honestly, just because of all the screenings we've gone to. Yeah. And, all the different things we've had to do. Um, my dad can quote it. He quotes it in casual conversation, honestly. Wow, that's a pretty cool thing, I guess. It's hilarious, <laughs> honestly. At a family dinner table, is that kind of weird? No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kind of like, okay, it's, I know that line. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's actually hilarious. But um, what was the next question? Like, how do you see it so many, I'm sorry. I, that's a good <laughs> question. I can't believe you forgot that. Now, how many times have you seen it? You said 15 times. Yeah, probably 15. Does it ever get old oh. seeing it, though? I mean... You know, there's always times where you're like, oh, man, I've seen this a million times. And you're having to watch yourself, so that's kind of weird. Yeah. But it's, How's I that weird, know. though? I mean, being you, I mean, you're on the screen well, you're here that you can't see. You're your but. worst critic, you know? So you're like, oh, man, like, you know. Okay, I, I got to, like, follow up on that. Like, what parts of the movie would you change then? Have Maybe you the seen worst, the dancing scene? I, I, no, oh. I haven't seen it yet. I'm sorry. I, I'm <laughs> Did you not, see my dance moves? You know, it, all of it looked good. Like, all the clips I've seen are great, okay? So don't give away any kidding. part I'm of it. I'm just I'm actually but, proud of that moment. Okay, you're kidding. proud of dancing. Okay, great. But, um, but no, seriously, though, is there, like, how, 
when you say you're your, your worst critic, okay, uh -huh. you have to like, look at it over and over again. Like, how do you make sure to not get caught up on that, basically, oh, yeah. but keep the main focus, the main focus? Yeah. I mean, you just have to realize, honestly, on set, like, if you give it everything you have, and, like, mm. every single day after you worked, you're just like, I literally gave it everything I had, then you can't really regret anything. Yeah. Um, because you know that you didn't, you know, you, you left it all in the field, basically. And my director would remind me of that every single day of, you know, like, let's just give it all we have today. Like, mm. have fun giving it your all. And that is so fun. Like, it's so fun to, to, to get done with the day and realize you literally gave everything you had. Wow. And so I'm also, I mean, I say you're your worst critic, but you're also really proud when you watch things because you're, like, more, not proud of, like, oh, that's me, but proud of, like, man, I gave it everything I had. Wow. And so, I don't know, I think it's fun in anything you do to do that. What was it like seeing it for the, for the first time? You know, it's done, they invite you to come see it. What was that feeling like? It was surreal. <laughs> I bet. And it was, yeah. it's so cool to see, you know, everybody that's involved with the cast and a crew are so crucial, and it's so cool to see everybody's talents and gifts and see it all come alive. It's like mm. magic, honestly. So wow. to see it all put together is, is beautiful. A couple more questions. Growing up in a, you know, in a youth ministry and a pastor's home, how did that play into you playing this part? Well, I think, I mean, you know, I have a lot of the same, well, you know, the same values and, and desires and uh, wanting to make an impact at, like uh, that Rachel had and even growing yeah. up. And, and so the way my parents raised me and the family that we were in, I don't know, I feel like that's the reason, you know, that that just yeah. helped in shaping, you know, and just like um, spurring me on in my, my relationship with God. And um, I don't know, I just feel like it, that's, how do, it just kind of shaped me in that way. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't uh, when people are all said and done, and this is, this is all over with, and, and it's going to be done sooner than what we like it to be, obviously. What do you want people to walk away saying and thinking about it? Um, one thing I'm, I really want people to walk away, just knowing that they have, they've they've been given a purpose. You know, like yeah. they they weren't created on accident, and, and and God wants to move in and through them in an incredible way. And mm. I f you know, I feel like one of the enemy's biggest um, threats to us really is just sailing through life. You know, and yeah, missing out on what God really wants to do in and through us, mm. and and the way we really can be his hands and feet and the way we can really change the world um, by first knowing him and then letting him move through us. And so, um, but that takes a relationship and that takes discipline and it takes um, committing to that and not, you know, there's so many distractions, but it really takes a focus, a laser focus. And um, so I hope people walk away uh, just knowing that they have purpose and to fully live in that purpose. Hmm. Last question. This was this was hard for me. Out of all the questions I was coming up with, and that people helped me come up with too, um, one day you're going to see Rachel um, when you get to, to heaven. What do you want her to say? That is such a hard question. I bet I was, um, I, it was hard writing that question. Yeah. By the way. But, um, I honestly like when I I have pictured that before. I'm not going to lie, but I don't know. I I want to give her a hug. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know. I hope. I hope she laughs at some things that were shown that she, you know, that got to be shown of her personality. Yeah. And I hope, I hope she's just so much joy of, of the way God moved through her. And, you know, even being able to be the same person, you know, and be playing her, I, I just think it'll be special. I think it'll be so fun, really. Just, yeah. I got to tell you, it's been, I cannot believe our time has flown by, to be honest with you. But it has been exciting being with you here tonight. And the movie is great. Number one. Um, which you should be proud of that, by the way, and I can see why it's number one. Um, it's been great talking to you tonight. Thank uh, you thank so you much. Thank you so much.